Six, uh, where Aristotle both gives a general overview um, of the different states of character you can be in. Uh, and then uh, we're going to look at his discussion of lack of self-control in uh, chapters two and three. So he starts book six, I mean book seven, by uh, looking at the intermediate states. So you've got virtue um, and vice at the extremes, but there are also these two kind of intermediate conditions. The controlled person uh, who does what's good but struggles with it, and the uncontrolled person. And we're going to come back to that overall summary. Um, but what I want to start with this class is uh, Aristotle's discussion of how lack of control is possible, how uh, akrasia is the Greek term, or what's come, sometimes called weakness of will. Um, we're going to start with reasons to think there's no such thing as lack of control or acting, um, lacking the willpower to follow through. Um, so this is from uh, Book 7, Chapter 2. Uh, Aristotle here appeal, appeals to Socrates, who seems to have thought that uh, we never uh, act against what's good for us. Um, so it would be terrible, Aristotle says, as Socrates used to think, for scientific knowledge to be in someone but controlled by something else and dragged around like a slave. For Socrates used wholly to combat this account on the supposition that there's no such thing as lack of self-control. For no one, while supposing that he's doing so, acts contrary to what is best, but acts that way only because of ignorance. Okay. And can everyone see the quotes uh, up on the slide there? So this is a key idea that we see um, Plato in his dialogues about Socrates reports. Socrates really seems to have thought this. And why Why did he think that? Well, if you think an action would be best for you, why would you choose a worse action? So uh, if I'm trying, it could be a simple choice. If I'm trying to decide uh, which flavor of ice cream to eat, and it's, you know, double chocolate delight or slime flavor i mean slime flavor might be interesting but you know why not just pick what seems best to me i love chocolate um and in general you know when i'm choosing why would i pick anything other than the best now i might pick what's what's not good because of ignorance so i could easily uh think I've picked the best flavor, uh, the flavor I'll enjoy most and be wrong about it. I could make a calculation about which class to sign up for or, uh, you know, which supplies to buy at the grocery store to get me through this. And it's bad. And pickled herring is disgusting. And I wasted my money. But if that's done out of ignorance, it's not surprising that I choose something that's less than the best. What would be really surprising and doesn't make sense, uh, Socrates thought, is if I knew something was bad and I, I knew there was a better option for me and I went with the worse option over the better option. So Socrates thought that's just not something people do. And so because of that, the characteristic Socratic view is that when we act badly, we do so because of ignorance. It's because we don't um, know uh, what's virtuous and good for us that we don't do it. Um, so is that making sense so far? Any, do we see why it's surprising that anyone would pick uh, a worse option when you could have a better option? 